Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about hobby space. I'm going to take you on a journey through my hobby space. Uh, I'll show you my office and all the way I have my space organized. Uh, the goal of this is really to share the products and the things that I have. So hopefully if you're interested in organizing your hobby space, you can use some of these. So look down below and you'll see links for everything down there. Uh, but as always, I hope this is certainly helpful to you. The goal isn't here isn't really to show you what I'm doing and say you should do this too. It's to give you ideas because I really do believe that an organized hobby space is a good hobby space. Um, the more efficiently things are organized, the quicker you will hobby, the more you will make of your time. Don't just throw things in boxes. Don't leave things scattered around. That slows you down. Your time, your life is precious. The more bar but moreover, the more barriers of entry you put in front of yourself between you and painting, the less you will sit at your desk and paint. If everything is within arm's reach and can be gotten in seconds, you will find you sit down and paint more often. So I hope this video helps uh, people discover some things that help them organize their space. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So we'll start with uh, the door to my office here. So this is what it looks like as you're looking in my office. Uh, this is more just for fun. Uh, very important, my poster, as you'll see here, one of my favorite posters I own. This is your He-Man, She-Ra poster. Uh, all, all the big ones in this poster. I truly do love this poster. It is, It creeps everybody out. He-Man's super creepy smile in this is absolutely wonderful. I love everything about this poster. <coughs> so, but I keep my hobby space. You can see like the area is relatively clean, etc. Um, that big wall that is the looking into the doctor who's your doctor, the doctor's TARDIS, uh, the fifth doctor's TARDIS is, uh, you can order that from a company in the UK. That, that one is a bit unusual. I don't know if you can still get that one or not, but that's just a fun one to start us off. Okay, so outside my office is uh, the first thing that I want to talk about, which is my photo booth. Um, photo booths are relatively cheap and inexpensive. Um, you can get them off of Amazon, which is where you can look below to find this link. This was, uh, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. It's easy to set up. It's easy to take down. Uh, and it really does make a big difference for taking pictures of your miniatures. You can use diffused light. You see I have a little light over on the side that I can use to set up to adjust the light. Um, I'll talk more about those later. Uh, the background is another very common question I get. Um, the backgrounds I get from Hangar 18 Miniatures, um, they make a whole range of backgrounds in lots of different colors, um, so you can order that from there. And it's a pretty simple setup. Just kind of, you know, put up your little box, and I have my other backgrounds rolled up on top to keep the dust off the front of them, and if I want to change it to use all black or all white or one of the other ones, I just clip it in there and go. So it's pretty easy. And uh, I, I do highly recommend it. If you want to take nice photos of your miniature, having a neutral background like that, that whole setup was maybe 50 bucks. And I mean, I've used it just an un innumerable number of times. That right next to it is a random 40k army that is a friend of mine that sits over here and occupies the rest of that space. Okay, walking into my office, if you turn to the left, I have my closet. My closet stores all my extra hobby stuff. Uh, and so again, everything is relatively organized, um, with sort of the tools I would use and my cases, um, everything's organized by game type, uh, or by type of kit. I don't keep a lot of extra stuff. I don't like to, um, I'll have another shot here in a moment with some bits where we zoom in on those and how I have those organized, but the wall, uh, at the back is really what I wanted to draw attention to here. Um, so everybody has the problem of like clam packs or a lot of us do, I suppose. I, I just end up with a lot of clam packs from, from various other places. Um, so I went to Home Depot and I bought myself a thing of pegboard and sunk it into studs in the wall and then bought a little hook pack for the pegboard. And now I have a little display wall where I can hang all my clam packs up. It's quick and easy. I mean, that giant sheet of pegboard is like $5 or something. And the hook pack was another five bucks. So really a very worthwhile organization piece as I can now keep all that stuff nice and organized. And when I want to find a little project to do, I can walk in there and look at the wall and pick something up. Here's a tighter zoom in on sort of the products that I have, like my AOS shelf. Um, my bits are all in these little plastic separators. 
You can get these lots of places on Amazon. You can get them from Hobby Lobby. You can get them from all sorts of stuff like that. Um, those I find are really the best ones. All of mine are labeled with the army. They're separated by army. And I just make a little label for the front of them. Keep all my bits organized within there. They're all organized by type and stuff like that. I have a, I would say, moderate-sized bits collection. I'm no, I'm no Paul Wagner, but hopefully that's uh, helpful. I, I really do recommend like separating them as opposed to keeping them all in some chaotic big mess or on sprues. It just makes it easier to find the bit you need uh, when you need to go dig for them later. All right. This is also where I hang my extra aprons. Turn around from there, and what you get is my wall. Uh, so these are, and what I wanted to call attention to here, uh, in addition to thanking my wife for the super sweet Sisters of Battle poster, uh, is the these little cases. So these glass cases come from Ikea. I know a lot of people get the Detolfs, the open ones, but those actually have cracks in the side, so they very easily let dust in. These are lockable cases that are more or less sealed, like there's not much in the way of open space. So they will keep like 99 point something percent of the dust out. Um, so this is where I keep all of my armies. They're all organized, obviously, by, you know, the army itself, uh, as well as sort of the competition pieces, which is what's in the left one. But I use this to keep the armies, you know, separated and, and easy to access and bring out to put on the table. Um, these things are a really great investment. You, it keeps your figs nice and clean and dust free. They look really good. I think they display well. The the dark blue ones you see there actually are open on top, so they let a lot of light in uh, because that top is glass. So and and they can be adjusted with shelves to have lots of different sizes to them and stuff like that. Those shelves are fully adjustable. They're a really great product. I think you know these are they're they're not cheap. Admittedly, like the advantage of the Detolfs or whatever from IKEA is that they're I think maybe seventy bucks. These are more than that. These run. Like 130 to 200 each, um, but you know if you're not going to buy a huge number of them, they are a pretty great investment. Um, this was something that was a big project for me. I was kind of tired of my old shelves, so I, I basically saved up for about a year, and then you know at Christmas time went out and sort of treated myself to to getting a lot of new shelves instead of buying armies or something. Um, and I'm I'm happy I did, as I I still did. I I really do love having these, and the fact that I can pull my figs out and keep them clean is you know, deeply appreciated. Okay, so uh, then this wall, this is just the rest of them. This is the other two. So I've got sort of six of these total. Um, they're easy to put next to each other. They're incredibly stable, even on like carpeted floor. And you really can stack a huge number of figs into them. Uh, some of these I've filled up quite a lot. Some of these I still got room and I can play around with some more stuff. So, but yeah, they're great. I really stand behind them. This is another one if you're interested in a bigger one. So this is more of a bookcase style. This one's also from Ikea. I do not remember the name of any of these, but I'll look them up and they'll be linked below. Um, this one I actually quite like, the front of those. But that opens wide in the front. Um, this was exact. <laughs> this thing is like 71 and a half inches tall. And this space is 72 and like an eighth of an inch. So I actually, the problem with this one is it is so tall, it's kind of unstable. So I had to put it on a base and then lock it to the ceiling. Um, it's super stable now because I actually like locked it to the ceiling and this thing cannot move now. Um, but this is a great one because it's like six shelves and they're actually quite deep and the whole front of the thing is glass. Again, so this is where like both of my two massive armies are, my Skaven and my Tomb Kings. Um, because they really, you can just pack a ton of figs into this one and it'll, it'll take up a ton of space. Um, I love this one. It, you know, this would be a great one to, if you, if you've got the room to get something this tall in there, it's not that wide, uh, but it can really hold a heck of a lot of figs. Okay. So organization of paint and painting supplies. Uh, I have these little three stack, I guess, like. I don't know what you call them, shelving units or something, or carry units, file cabinets. I don't know what they are. Um, you can go to, obviously, like the container store or, again, like Hobby Lobby or any hardware store will carry these, things like this. Uh, this is where I keep all my tools and glue and basic basing supplies and stuff like that. 
Uh, same with the plastic one above it, the long flat one. That's where I keep like my static grass and um, tufts and stuff like that. They're all laid out in there so I can just open them up and see all the tufts. Uh, highly recommend those. I'll link a few of those down below. The brushes, if you might notice those right up front, uh, that comes from Ironheart Artisans. Uh, and I really like that as a little brush holder. It's actually really nice. It holds your brushes kind of horizontal so that any thing doesn't flow down into the ferrule. Uh, it's a nice little product. It's, I, I picked mine up at Adepticon. You can order it from their website. They're like 10 bucks for this little MDF thing. You set it up in eight seconds, and then you've got a cool brush holder. The acrylic paint racks, of which you'll see many, these are nail polish racks. Um, I have them stacked up. Nail polish racks, if this is the kind of space you have where you want to do it like this, this is the recommendation. You'll find a link for this one below. I see a lot of people ask about the nail polish racks. Um, these are invaluable to me. Um, I have a lot of paints, as you'll see, and I find these things to be absolutely invaluable for keeping it organized. Again, being able to hobby quickly, the amount of time I save, because when I turn around and go, I want this red from Vallejo. Okay, it's right there. And I know exactly where it is. I grab it. I put it on here. I work with it. I put it away. It's done. I know exactly where every single paint is across the range I have at any second and can immediately pick it up and use it. There is no searching. There is no waiting. It goes from shelf to on the model in record time. So these are really great. All right, so this wall is uh, where I keep the rest of my nail polish racks. Like I said, this is these are really critical. I love these big nail polish racks. Um, you can order these from Amazon. Again, link is below. Um, these hold hundreds of paints. Uh, I organize my paints by type and then color. So that's my hierarchy. Um, but I, which by the way, there's nothing right or wrong about that. Uh, it's just whatever. Um, the, but the way that, uh, these just hang on the wall, make everything within arm's reach. It's fantastic. These can hold so many paints and it will really do wonders organizing your space. If you've got open wall space where you can afford to hang one of these up, I would absolutely recommend these. These are just wall nail polish racks and they're great. Now, the one thing that they won't really hold is bigger bottles, things like the FW Ink or things that come in that size bottle. So for that, there's actually a kitchen rack. It's like for organizing, I assume, bigger spice jars and you know cooking stuff. So that's what the thing is to the left. It's a very simple little thing. Costs, I don't know, a few bucks. I think that thing was like eight bucks or something when I ordered it. Just, you know, sink it into the wall and uh, you're off to the races. It's great for, as you can see, I've got all my FW inks on it, but it's great for holding those bigger bottles that don't really fit within the standard nail polish rack. I don't have a lot of those, but I like having that there, having it over top of my airbrush space, which is what we're going to take a look at next. Uh, makes it easy for me to reach up, grab an ink, boom, spray with it, because ink is a really critical component of any time I'm airbrushing. So uh, that I find to be a really big help. Uh, but yeah. There you go. Um, both of these are linked below. I really love these. So next, we're going to take a look at the actual airbrush space itself. Next up to the airbrush booth itself. So the airbrush booth, I will link down there. Um, there's a whole lot of airbrush-related stuff here, you know, between the little rack to keep my airbrushes in and then the booth itself, which folds up and can store rather easily. Uh, but as well, then, again, I have another one of, like, I have a stackable kitchen rack, again, for shelves that is deep. And so that's where I keep all my airbrush-related stuff. So the cleaner and the flow aid and, you know, kind of everything that I have there related to that, my dull coat and all that sort of stuff. Again, everything I would need to airbrush is right at arm's length when I want to airbrush. Um, this space could probably use with a little cleaning up. I do tend to work a little messier in my airbrush space. Uh, but as well, a little shout out for Silly Putty. If you want to keep an easy masking agent, that's what that little purple egg is. I keep a little egg of Silly Putty under my airbrush booth. If I need to mask something quickly, pop the egg, pull out the Silly Putty, pop it over the top, spray, pull it off, done. You can mask in seconds and it doesn't leave anything behind on the model. So always fun and easy. 
So then our last shot is sort of the all-in space, as you can see with the all-important Diet Dr. Pepper there, a critical component to any, uh, to any space. Uh, I'll just call out my lights here on the last one. It's very important to have good light. My area where I work from is absolutely flooded with light. Um, so I have a light directly above me in the ceiling that is a 100-watt daylight balanced bulb. I have those two lights you see above my monitor, which are both the little – I went and bought those little uh, lamp clips for 6 bucks from Home Depot. Um, and then one of them has a daylight balanced bulb, and one of them has a yellow balanced bulb. Um, and the reason that I did that is because you do want a bit of more natural yellow light in your room. You'll notice neither of them are actually pointing directly at my workspace, but they're pointing at the white wall to diffuse the natural light. So what I get is an area of lots of ambient natural light coming from all directions, which is what I'm aiming at. And it's a mix of both yellow and blue light. Um, for direct light on my desk, I have the Ot light. Um, that is, I see a lot of people ask about desk lamps. I, I love Ot lights. I have this one and a little travel one. Um, I... They're pretty fantastic. They last a long time. They're very bright, and they are wonderful for the space. Um, so I, I really do love the Outlight. I find it to be a pretty great uh, lamp for painting. That's basically it. That's my hobby space. Like I said, I'll throw all the links down below. Um, I'm lucky that I've got this big office to to work from, um, where I you know sort of set up and go. Um, everything at arm's reach, I appreciate it. I enjoy it. It lets me, you know, get painting when I want to rather quickly. But uh, there you go. That's it. That's the hobby space. Um, the desk itself is probably not that interesting or relevant. It's kind of a crappy desk. I don't even remember where I got it from, but it's an L-shaped desk for the corner. But have a good desk that has good drawers. I keep stuff next to me as well, like bigger things that don't fit anywhere else I keep in the long drawers. So that's where I keep like big giant basing material tubs, things that are too big to fit anywhere else and stuff like that. But yeah, there you go. That's uh, that's my hobby space. Uh, I hope that's helpful. I hope maybe some of the links below give you some ideas for how you can organize your space. But as always, I appreciate you watching this. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you liked it, give it a like. That's always nice. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future where next week we'll be returning back to painting techniques, of course. And uh, if you're something you want to see me cover in a hobby cheating video, feel free to put that down in the comments. I'm always happy to uh, respond to user requests. But as always, I thank you for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.